thanks for joining this session uh, titled Possibility of Dynamic Rebalance in Multi-Node HPC Vehicle Environment for SDV. Very long. Uh, I was able to say it. Um, so I think it's a very challenging um, concept for automotives, probably. Uh, I hope I can make uh, friends and call, um, here uh, so that we can push this concept forward somehow. And uh, I'd like to begin my uh, presentation now. Uh, first of all, about myself. Um, so uh, Mary was uh, having her session here today uh, earlier. So I, write, I actually write a Volvo. It's a V60, very nice. Uh, it's one of the latest ones, so it has a nice Android uh, running on it. Um, I've been in, in this automotive uh, industry only about a year and a half now. So I've learned all those things happening, and so now I understand uh, what's happening inside my Volvo. Uh, it's very nice, you know. One day, uh, it was a very hot day. Uh, somehow the Android screen didn't show up. <laughs> so those things happen, but I know why, I, I guess. So that's a good thing about working in this uh, industry. Uh, so um, I work as a, a from uh, in EPEM Japan company. Uh, it's a global company, and uh, we have this automotive R&D uh, team. Uh, I work between our, um, currently I'm working a lot with a semiconductor company, uh, also with some OEMs hopefully, and uh, communication between our global teams uh, in terms of communication, language, uh, process, mindset, and of course technical aspects. So I, I'll do a lot of those bridging work with our global team. Um, just a small background of myself. Uh, I used to be a VC++ Windows programmer a long time ago, a little, just a little bit. So I know a little bit about working around memories on those things. Uh, I went into a SoftBank mobile carrier. Uh, I was working as a planning um, department uh, for a game platform. So I uh, was working with, like around Java platforms, um, working with content providers, uh, game providers, uh, to let them use those things. Uh, then went to some um, iOS, Android App Studio, um, e-commerce platform. Um, I went to an event called South by Southwest, if you know. So I like those new things happening in this technology industry. Uh, then I went to a global tech agency. Um, it wasn't EPAM that I'm in right now. Uh, I learned a lot around um, agile um, development, but also transformation within the organizations. So I do a lot with people uh, things, um, and I like to do those things. Uh, then I went to EPAM, but also in between I was joining this flying car. Do you know flying car? Re these days it's kind of a, um, you see this word in the news. Um, I was in one of the Jap Japanese flying car startup, um, working with 15 great uh, engineers from mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, aerodynamics engineers. Uh, in the end, I was even uh, running the te flight test. I was a director of that. So somehow, uh, I've done all these things, um, and now I'm back in EPAM, a uh, year and a half working as I'm part of the automotive team that we have. And uh, all these things that I've done is somehow connecting. Uh, so it's, a, it's interesting, yeah, connecting the dots here and, com and being able to talk to everyone here. Um, my model is being in the head of um, cutting edge technology and also being creative, meaning all these collaborations happening with people and also in the global uh, environment like this. So enough of me, a little bit about my company. It's a global agency, 50,000 people globally. We do a lot with um, a lot of things around uh, technology, not just automotives. Automotives are just a small part of it. Um, but we have a um, cool uh, team that does uh, these things around the in-car uh, technology these days. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. And uh, this talk would be um, inspired by Artem um, Magaev's um, talk that's been done. Uh, he's uh, one of our um, technology architect. Uh, he's also uh, worked a lot around Sophie. He's also worked a lot with the Zen, also around Zephyr. So probably maybe some of you know him from somewhere. But if you'd like to um, know more detail about the technologies, uh, please go see his um, presentations. So just a small analogy around today's topic, um, dynamic rebalance. So static 
to dynamic, um, when and how did you leverage becoming dynamic? You know, things are static in a lot of ways, and things can transition to dynamic, and you see a lot of changes happen sometimes. Um, it could be uh, um, engine coming into the industry, or it could be uh, computing power, uh, making things dynamic more, um, a lot of different um, things. Um, one of my examples would be uh, remote working. So in the COVID area, um, era, uh, you know, uh, we were able to have this uh, privilege to work remote more. And that opened a lot of different things. Uh, you can now work in this, uh, have meetings from this room even so. So those things uh, were able because things became dynamic uh, with technology. Uh, so with that in mind, um, we have this product called Ailes Edge, so I'm going to go through that and then go into the topic around this today's uh, main theme and how to get started about it and a little bit about what's ahead. So uh, Ailes Edge is something we have been building uh, for several years now. Uh, if you go to this website, um, you'll see a lot of information, um, features. It's quite technical. Um, but uh, the inf a lot of the informations are there, so if you can understand those things, that'd be great. We have a, a whole lot of uh, open source code on GitHub, so if you can look into that as well. But anyways, it's a edge orchestration platform. And just a high level, what it is, is uh, we have AO score as the runtime for the vehicle or the embedded system, and on the left, uh, right would be the AOS cloud that can manage it. So uh, AOS Core, uh, what it does is we have a lightweight OCI compatible container uh, enabled. We also have Unikernel uh, enabled with Zephyr and Zen. Um, I remember uh, Kate mentioned about my presentation um, yesterday because Zephyr was in my abstract. Uh, we also have multi-node orchestration, which is uh, what makes possible the dynamic rebalance. And the whole code is basically open source. It's Apache 2.0, so you can have a look into it and um, contribute, of course, if you can. Uh, on the cloud side, uh, it's all about OTA management, SOTA, FOTA. We have a very versatile uh, management system there. Uh, and of course, the orchestration configuration uh, should be done um, from the cloud. We have a management UI. Uh, and it's also enterprise integration ready with the REST APIs and um, all the tool sets. And it's source code free license. So if you can work with us, uh, definitely you can uh, access the code from us. And the, already the cloud itself is running on AWS and Azure. So uh, we have things very scalable already. So anyways, uh, with this, how it came in, how it kind of connects to dynamic rebalance is what I'm gonna um, talk about right now. So the concept was born back then and came, uh, so Artem, um, his team worked, started thinking about how edge computing should be in the automotive context. So we know we have Sophie, Clips, SDV, AG, of course, uh, they're all work, work, started work on these container uh, concepts. And uh, we've done so as well. And we know that there's, of course, certain limitations um, that doesn't allow the use of usual cloud native tools. And uh, it could be too heavy for a uh, limited um, environment. Um, only containers are supported. Uh, there's issues around functional safety, um, not totally designed for remote fleets. So there's different types of limitations, of course, uh, all around. And uh, we try to uh, conquer that. Uh, and one of the things that we've done was um, uh, lightweight container. So it is OCI compliant. We made our own um, tech, tech stack for that. Um, but it is compliant, so it's nothing different from everybody else. But it's already lightweight enough so that the automotive can utilize it within the limited environment. Uh, mixed criticality is the next thing that we came to. So 
of course, we thought about the containers, but then uh, if we want to make it more versatile uh, for the uh, vehicle or automotive to be in the SDV era, we got to think about safety, uh, of course. And to enable that, uh, our team uh, started use think about the Unicurtle. Um, and to enable it, uh, we looked into uh, Zen Hypervisor um, booting the uh, Zephyr Ar uh, Artos and uh, using that for the Unicurtle uh, technology. Um, of course, uh, there's different um, levels of um, criticality. Um, there is also still certification um, challenge that we need to work on as community probably as well um, or also with uh, some contributors so that's something ongoing but definitely um, I do hear even today there's people talking about Zephyr, there's people talking about Zen so I'm sure the industry is kind of looking into something like this as a new alternative so hope that uh, we can uh, work together on this as well. So uh, that's something we came through. Uh, lightweight container, uh, mixed criticality with the unikernels. Whoops. And then uh, we came to that, of course, working for the OEMs or the industry, it's got to be quite uh, ready in terms of security, uh, scalability. Um, it's got to be um, fault tolerant. Um, uh, there's all those things that can happen uh, for the vehicle. Some vehicle can be um, sitting in your garage for a long time and then start uh, one day and it start, still needs to work uh, as it should be. So there's all those things that need to be considered, um, but we worked on that. Uh, and also uh, considering that uh, there should be new businesses um, on this uh, SDVs happening, uh, the platform should be ready for third party uh, management uh, so that the not just the OEMs by itself but other businesses or service can come on top of it. So we already have this management uh, um, or, um, implemented so that uh, OEMs can have other companies uh, provide their services on top of their platform uh, with this technology. Um, of course, there's more that we're working on um, in the far uh, right of the slide, um, but today I'm going to talk about this dynamic rebalance a little bit more. So dynamics, um, in the beginning of the presentation, I did kind of brought this um, analogy from static to uh, dynamic, and always there's this going back and forth. Um, I remember Jerry's presentation uh, talking about uh, centralized and decentralized going back and forth. There's always this um, pendulum going around. And I think it's kind of the same for static and dynamics. And uh, we're in the forth, uh, forefront of that. And But the thing is, uh, we have to kind of anticipate uh, what can happen when dynamics come in, um, but we never know what that might be sometimes. Uh, so who would have imagined um, when remote working kind of was enabled that uh, you might be joining a meeting from your bathroom or something? I don't know. Uh, so those things never people imagine, but uh, with the technology already there, uh, things can emerge and things can even spread uh, to new uh, usages, new experiences, uh, new things in the society maybe. So I'm just gonna go into a little bit of the concept of what we've um, implemented with the Edge. So currently, uh, I believe if we have, this is an example of two nodes, uh, two cylinders uh, represent the nodes. And statically, probably you would allocate your comp um, you would configure, it, configure the allocation for each of the functions. And during the runtime, uh, the static usage will uh, be done, of course. But then when it comes to high load, um, because it's static, uh, the high load would exceed and things will become an error and uh, the services might have to shut down or something. So 
these things can happen, of course. Whereas uh, if the dynamic rebalance is there, you don't need a static configuration. It's a dynamic usage, so you would have all the um, rest uh, accumulated area um, available for you. The system will detect high load. So here, uh, the right-hand cylinder is kind of becoming loaded, and so you would want to move one of those things. So automatically, uh, it would move one of the, the dark blue um, function to the left-hand side where it has space. And there would be still room for the other light blue um, service or function uh, can ha have more uh, process running. So that's just a very high-level concept, but uh, I think you get the idea. <clears throat> so that's very uh, easy technical uh, thing that can, um, you can understand, of course. But why do you want this? Now, this is very uh, hard to um, explain or maybe um, people to think sometimes. That's why I brought the um, analogy in the beginning, so you can kind of relate to yourself what, what might happen. But it's one of the another level of abstraction. So software shouldn't be embedded. I mean, of course, we're in the embedded world uh, talking here today. But uh, software on top of it is now becoming more abstracted and becoming more flexible uh, these days. So uh, to make it flexible to another level uh, up, uh, we want this dynamic rebalance uh, to enable that dynamic utilization of um, compute resource. Of course, um, that's what uh, was explained in the previous slide. And what can bring you in vehicle simulation, more AI usage maybe, uh, third party services to use the open space. Um, maybe you can utilize the open space at rest of the car. Um, you might be want to sell your open resource. Um, that's something like maybe Elon Musk might be thinking with his things. But it opens up a lot of the things, uh, conceptually at least. Of course, there's uh, difficulties to, towards that, but at least you can imagine these things <laughs> might, might happen. Um, dynamic hardware configuration. So you would want unified platforms these days. You want cost efficiency by using that unified platform. Um, you can add your nodes uh, if it's um, multi-node as possible. Uh, so this makes it totally uh, dynamic within the hardware uh, to be configured. So in a nutshell, uh, it opens a lot of possibilities for emerging vehicle and mobility services experiences uh, with this abstraction um, using more of the compute resource and then the hardware is to be uh, dynamically configured. So, but then what, how do we enable this? So you would probably need a holistic shift now this is very challenging, probably. Software-wise, you need to think about microservices architecture. You need the functions to be working in a more dynamic, in a in virtualized manner. In terms of the hardware to enable it, uh, of course you would need a more high power, high performance computing, uh, which is coming up these days. And, but also computing architecture need to be centralized and, and distributed in a way uh, so that it works nicely. Also, what's important is that it enables this multi-node uh, aspect. We need some mesh network connected between the nodes so that the, uh, or the nodes or the VMs uh, can work in a, in a connected way. And also, you definitely need some high-speed connections. So these days, of course, there's uh, connectivity between the um, nodes, but you probably need more high speed for that. Yeah. So um, talking with the um, semiconductor comp companies, uh, sometimes these uh, concepts um, are not uh, thought enough or um, the industry is not thinking about it too much yet. So uh, I don't think there's much uh, being enabled uh, at the moment. but. 
uh, in terms of software and hardware, uh, you need this holistic, uh, in a way it's a paradigm shift. Um, and for big companies and organizations, it, it is probably de definitely a, a challenge, of course, because everybody's working on some uh, siloed manner or uh, there's no like a one person who can uh, think about this whole thing. And what about safety, of course? Um, dynamic rebalance itself, it should not be used for everything. Uh, we can't uh, move very um, uh, safeness needed service from just easily to another node. Uh, it shouldn't be happening like that. So there is a spectrum uh, or a range of criticality that you have to manage, of course. And there's different, different levels of uh, safety requirement for uh, each of those uh, areas or ranges. So you need to be able to control uh, and manage that uh, nicely and with proper isolation that uh, technically uh, issues won't happen in the safety area. So enough about concepts. Uh, what I'm here for today is that um, the technology is already there for you to uh, start working on this. So you can get started to experience this dynamic rebalance uh, even by yourself now. <clears throat> so once again, if you go to um, our uh, service website, there's all the technical information uh, and how to get started about it. I'll go through a little bit about how to getting started because uh, the documents that we have is a little bit too technical sometimes. Uh, we need to work on that. But if you just uh, click on the link here uh, through my document, uh, you can go to this uh, quick start page and start uh, looking into what's really uh, needed to start working on this. Uh, just from high level of uh, what was listed there, uh, so you would need to uh, set up your host, first of all. We have this, uh, some SDK tools uh, as key or uh, signing um, process and also some provisioning tool that we have. And once you've done that, uh, you should get access uh, to our website. Um, through our website, you can create this uh, account. And what you need to do is you can, you can, you're going to create an account as OEM. And also, you're, gonna, you're going to create an account as service provider. So basically, uh, considering that OEM would be managing their platform, that's why we have OEM accounts. And under it, uh, we, you can have multiple uh, service providers. Uh, it could be third parties. It could be, uh, if it's an OEM, it could be different departments, maybe, that owns your service. So each of those could be a service provider uh, that the OEM would uh, certify uh, to be available, um, used on, on their platform. So based on these accounts, uh, you can create and provision the unit device. Uh, device can be a hardware or uh, some virtual machine. Um, we have um, uh, some procedure for that on the website. And you're going to create this as your OEM. Uh, as a reference hardware already, uh, we have the Renesis R-Car um, Gen 3 and Gen 4 um, hardwares uh, to be um, already available. So uh, if you would have already one of those uh, at your um, hand, uh, it's something you can start to work on already. And you would need to create some service as a service provider. Service meaning, uh, in this case, a container service. And once you've done that, uh, you would install a service to the unit. And if you can have uh, multiple units, uh, you can try this uh, dynamic rebalancing, definitely. Uh, just a glimpse of what the management UI looks like. So we have uh, these things um, managing the services from the top, um, managing the units um, in terms of fleets or uh, 
other uh, means. And we have soda, FOTA, uh, these all these uh, things that you would see in general OTA management services maybe. Uh, and of course, you can manage the users uh, with this. So it's quite already a holistic uh, service that we have uh, as OSH, uh, AOS Edge. Uh, and this is uh, what you would see if you're using this EOS cloud. Um, but just to, as I said, it is already um, integration ready uh, for the OEMs, so they can start looking to it. Um, but probably they would have their own infrastructures, they would have their own platforms already running. So uh, this, is, this is just an example that uh, you can start using right away, but definitely you can take just the parts of it and uh, integrate to yourself, and we can be uh, supporting for that as well. Okay, so um, I'm trying to leave some time for um, Q&A. Um, so I'm just gonna um, close this with this what's ahead um, topic. So what, I, what I've t mentioned today is just a part of uh, the future we see and how we want to help and how we want to enable it. Um, now it's very um, small in a way, you see. Um, the complexity is growing and you know the number of the codes or the number of costs, um, how, how much it costs for the software is, um, that's been talked in this throughout this uh, two days. Um, but the future is that you would have the modern development criticality and control and all the other things uh, as the platform um, would enable. And on top of it, what, we're, what we want is the new experience and the businesses that can emerge on it. And you need, want the rapid evolution uh, to happen there. Uh, flexibility of updates and trying new things uh, quite easily uh, with this uh, platform and the technologies. So we want to help the industry achieve this level of abstraction. Um, I think that's what software-defined vehicle or mobility would mean, and to manage the complexity while still ensuring the safety and security uh, with what we're doing. <clears throat> and but also, uh, we definitely need the community to work together on this. Um, we're just making a small part of it, I believe. And so to enable this, we definitely need a holistic approach and collaboration from the hardware level to the whole architecture um, altogether and as a, could be a, as part of the industry and you know, as an ecosystem. Um, an update in the software development paradigm and the practice is a big challenge, as I mentioned, uh, as a holistic shift. Um, and that's really something I do see in working with our clients sometimes, uh, working as in the embedded or hardware-oriented um, world and coming to a shift into this software native world uh, is a big challenge, definitely, uh, in terms of how we work, how we think, um, how we create the business as well. So it's not just about software development, but what comes around it. Uh, and also, of course, designing their architecture uh, from that perspective is something uh, ideally is necessary. It might take time uh, for some companies. It might not take some time. Um, so there's probably a different level of maturity uh, or how they embrace these technologies. Uh, and to enable new stuff coming out. But in a nutshell, uh, as I mentioned how uh, we want to understand this dynamic rebalance, if the technology is there, uh, there's things that we haven't imagined that will emerge. So uh, as I mentioned, as the remote working, when that happened, you would never imagine uh, where you work from, uh, and also talking to um, colleagues uh, almost every minute, maybe. So sometimes, of course, that could be um, hard or uh, very different, uh, but uh, working to, to that, I think it's uh, something that you can 
work on still. And I think the people here are looking into that kind of new future. So I'd like to really uh, make friends here and send out the message that we have and hope that we can keep talking about this and make something um, come more practical and tangible to our hands. So uh, that's really about it. Uh, 30 minutes that we passed, I will leave some time for Q&A. Um, but anyways, uh, if you can just kind of take some shot of this QR code, uh, I have a small um, survey sheet there, very, um, only a couple questions. Um, we'd be glad to hear some comments of what I've talked today. Um, also, if you, can, if you have any requests uh, about questions or about what I've uh, mentioned, I'm happy to uh, reach out to you. Um, so if we can take some time for that, uh, that would be great. And uh, yeah, I think I'm open for your questions now today. Thank you. I have two questions. Sure. Uh, the first one is the, uh, when you think about the multi-node, uh, is it uh, assumption is uh, homogeneous case or heterogeneous, which have different capability of computing resources? Mm -hmm. So the heterogeneous case also considered when you uh, design and concept building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm still new to this space, so I'm still kind of need some explanation on that. Can you explain that a little bit more? Uh, so the, uh, if we have two nodes, yeah, yeah. The, if the computing resource mm -hmm. is the same, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. imagine the ah, homogeneous case. Right, 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 right. But the, it, sometimes, the, mm. in the, based on the architecture, right. the computing resource can be different. Ah, yeah. okay. So in that case, also considered in your concept. Ah, yeah. okay. That's something I need to ask my colleagues, actually. Uh, I haven't thought about that uh, in deeply enough. Yeah, thank you for that input. Yeah, I would take it. And let me know your um, address or something, and I would definitely okay. um, respond to you for this. And second question is the, uh, the rebalancing Timing is very important yeah. because mm -hmm. so when is possible time to rebalance? Right. Uh, so uh, our team did um, a lot of probably investigations around this, and currently uh, they have some algorithm um, implemented for that. Um, I don't have the detail to tell you right now, but uh, there is uh, definitely uh, the right timing for it. And probably still we need to work on that uh, as well. So we do need more examples or uh, people working on it, definitely. Uh, so I hope that uh, we'll see that in the near future, yes. And uh, one more, just to request. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I usual, uh, usually I worked in the embedded world during several uh, decades. Eh? Mm -hmm. so uh, even though automotive, the, when I think about the electric vehicle, mm -hmm. the power consumption also important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the when you, uh, your current concept is considering the remaining computing resources, mm -hmm. uh, and how about the add uh, power things also? Because the when you think about power, yeah. the balancing mm -hmm. can uh, prohibit the power consumption, uh, mm -hmm. more power consumption yeah. might be required. Mm -hmm. Or the, for when you think about the power, mm -hmm. the no balancing to, to uh, concentrate yeah, 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 on yeah. The, thing, the one issue and mm -hmm. the other issue power up yep. is better for that. So, the, so the, it's a very, very complex problem. Yes. So the, uh, mm -hmm. how about the power also considering in future. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think we need to consider that more probably. Uh, of course, um, as the era goes on, uh, definitely more power uh, will be available for us and more should be efficient, things will be more efficient. So it's a working together thing, I believe. And uh, yeah, definitely we need to think about it still. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, a lot of the input there. Anybody else? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, uh, this system using Zephyr as uh, norm zero? Or 
uh, background of this, uh, this question, I know uh, your company uh, pay a great effort for mm -hmm. uh, supporting uh, Zephyr Dom Zero function. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, this is a uh, uh, practical uh, example of uh, this uh, using, using this function. Or right. Not. Right. Yes. Uh, so um, as. Um, you just mentioned uh, we do a lot around Zen and Zephyr, uh, and uh, we're using the Zephyr as the thing control domain as list um, written here um, on the right. So uh, this is based on the Zen virtualization, and then the Zephyr uh, works uh, nicely to control these uh, other unit kernels uh, and also work with the uh, containers as well. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Um, I thought some gentleman here. Thank you very much for your mm -hmm. presentation. And could, uh, so, uh, so I have two, uh, so one, one question and one comment. And uh, so could you. you show us the, the system diagram uh, which uh, so uh, showing mesh style network? Okay, sure. And here, my question, so, so my stupid question is, so, so are you really, uh, uh, so is this mesh, so mesh connection, is it mm -hmm. a logical one or a physical one? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so here my point is, if this was a physical, so if this so, uh, uh, assumes physical Ethernet connection, mm -hmm. uh, that means one node uh, must have at least three Ethernet uh, connections. Ah, yes, 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 yes. And uh, typically, right. uh, so I'm from the OEM, yep. one of the OEMs, and uh, so typically, so, uh, 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 so, uh, so economical, so economical design needs to have so uh, so star uh, so star type mm -hmm. topology mm -hmm. by using so one Ethernet hub. Right, so, right. And yeah. uh, so, are you guys really so assuming the physical mesh style connection? Right. Uh, I need to confirm that a little bit more with our guys, of course. Um, but um, I did um, remember talking about that, and uh, definitely we need multiple um, sockets, um, physical sockets. For. Uh, for to, this mesh, right to mesh enable type. the mesh network, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not just for redundancy, but uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Traffic balancing also. I I don't know. I mean, uh, redundancy um, is one way of doing it. Uh, uh, it could be a one use case, but also uh, you can probably use this resource. Uh, in multiple ways is how we think at the moment, yeah. So we want to discuss this um, more in the practical manner. So uh, your comment is something really valuable to us. Uh, we, uh, Of course, we, our team is, uh, have a lot of experience around this um, OEM um, automotives and embedded. So they have their ideas, but uh, we do still need uh, actual uh, what's happening uh, in the industry at the moment and uh, want to work with that as well. So definitely that kind of comment is welcome, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, mm. yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, so this is a kind of so trade-off of the design. Right, yeah, 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 I think so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, understood. Uh, and the second point, uh, second point is, so just a comment. So so you listed up, uh, <coughs> so uh, you explained that, so regarding the use cases, mm -hmm. of the auto, so this kind of thing, yeah. uh, so you are, so, so Talking with so AGL or Eliza, or to, uh, those kind of so organizations. Right. So and here my comment is: so what about uh, so joining to the the AECC Automotive Edge Computing Consortium? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there. So so uh, so they are so uh, so they are. Uh, uh, so they are doing so various kinds of use cases study and also publish. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So, various, uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, various documentation. Right, right. Yeah. I, I, I do notice um, um, that different uh, communities are these days starting to work on those use cases. Sometimes yeah. uh, also um, setting some requirements. Uh, so. Uh, uh, definitely, I think we need to look into that a little bit more. Um, having to look too much around the AECC, so that's something uh, we'll try to look into, yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, I have a question about uh, uh, like the safety critical uh, fun features mm -hmm. and, and, and also the things that can be done with the HPC. Uh, so in in uh, some situation, the, for example, for something like uh, collision avoidance, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, 
there would be some uh, safety critical things like like uh, applying a brick automatically Mm -hmm. And there are other like uh, computation intensive work, like like having a visual feedback, like right. on a dashboard or mm -hmm. maybe head up display and yeah. so on. Uh, where is the line that you you put for the for that uh, these those features uh, can be used with the HPC? Mm -hmm. Mm, that's a very hard question for me at the moment. Um, I don't know if there's a defined line for that. I think uh, some of the communities are uh, trying to think about this as a requirement maybe um, setting. Um, uh, definitely, so that's something we need to think about still. Uh, as I wrote here, I think there's a spectrum of this mixed criticality and if we can draw the line, uh, that's great. But maybe in many cases, uh, that's something you still need to kind of uh, design for yourself uh, based on um, experiments and actual results. Yeah. Just as, this is just my personal um, feel at the moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe just a comment about that. Uh, I think it may be possible, like for example, from a a common like canvas that. That uh, like, like the critical things are triggered with with the embedded system, and mm -hmm. then and then there is a bus message, can bus message that uh, is given to the HPC system that mm -hmm. can be deal with the deal with it separately. Sorry, was that a question? Uh, that's just a follow up comment on 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 the same question. Like, oh, okay. Like like, if there's a we we can use can bus or something too. Like one to be handled by the embedded, mm -hmm. and the other to be for the HPC. I see. Yeah, that could be a one way of separating things. Yes, maybe. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Maybe last question. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Very impressive uh, presentations, and I hope so. Uh, so, uh, Artem in the, in, in the, the, the fourth slide, mm -hmm. remembering a lot for his talent. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, one question. So, yep. for, uh, for this uh, implementation, have you already verified on any Edge platform? Mm -hmm. uh, so, if yes, what, what kind of boards you have, uh, what kind of hardware you have used? And in that case, uh, what about the latency or say the uh, I mean, when you, when you tra transit from one node to another, mm -hmm. uh, how far? Mm. How I don't far have the definite metrics for that at the moment, mm -hmm. but of course we're working on it, so um, should be something that's um, usable uh, at the moment. But we definitely we need um, evaluation with the actual use cases. Um, yes. Um, in terms of uh, hardware that we use, so uh, we've. Uh, worked with the uh, Renesas hardwares uh, to enable the dynamic rebounds. Um, so there is, uh, we probably sh shown the demo in the CS um, last year or so, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, because probably it's a similar thing uh, to, to previous uh, questions. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, automotive hardware is uh, not like server, which mm -hmm. is uh, quite resources limited. Yeah. In this case, uh, uh, this kind of, uh, and also, uh, it's more time critical, yes, mm -hmm. which uh, probably uh, giving a, a less room for for this kind of transition. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Maybe thinking about some other strategy, mm -hmm. how to scheduling and how even using re re redundancy, those kind of uh, uh, strategy may be helpful. Yeah, so I think that's um, really about the spectrum of the mix of criticality and depending on the use case uh, or which. Uh, process you're, you're running, um, that kind of conditions can be different. And that's something we need to uh, uh, use your everyone's knowledge for this uh, to have some a lot more examples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So that's about it. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you.